power that they are pleased to see the words Tory gain on a television screen for the first time in a long time. But when they ponder that they will have fewer seats at the end of this evening, we think, than Michael Foote did in 1983. They've got another one in while you're talking about gains. Sorry, interruption, Nick. Scarborough and Whitby, the Conservatives are gains. There's another gain that they can chalk up. That's right. And there are many gains they can look to, but a whole series of seats I've uh, looked at as we've gone through that you expected to go tonight, even on the basis of our exit poll. Hove and Birmingham, Edgespin and Portsmouth South and Batley and Spen, Vale of Glamorgan, Battersea, Pendle. Seats held when Margaret Thatcher and John Major were in office and they haven't managed to get them tonight. And, and one more thing, that which just shows this topsy-turvy <laughs> evening, um, a Conservative majority in Solihull looks as though, at, the to at least the Liberal Democrats, are claiming that they're going to take Solihull, which would, uh, which would mean overtaking a 19% Tory majority there. And would be particularly bad news for the Tories because Solihull's always been held up as an example of a metropolitan area in which the Tories have got seats. Now the Lib Dems have wanted to say to try and get three party politics truly going, look actually the Tories are dying off in Scotland and Wales and in the metropolitan areas. Solihull would be a, a, another example they'd use to advance that case. And as um, Michael Howard walks through the where the count is being held, Colin can you help us a bit on the uh, Tory success or predicament? Well, what I've actually been looking at, Jonathan, which may help us along a little bit, is turnout. You remember that when we were here four years ago, there was a lot of really panic about how turnout had fallen, and since then we've had this extension of postal voting, which was meant to help. Well, according to the results we've got so far, turnout tonight is up, but it's only up about 2%. And one explanation that relates to the Tory predicament is the one type of seat where turnout has gone up much more than that, about 5% on average, is in those seats where they were defending themselves from the Liberal Democrats, the decapitation strategy again. Both parties have been throwing everything clearly into those contests. The voters respond, they go to the ballot box. It's worth campaigning, it's worth parties approaching voters. They get some response, they got response in Bethnal Green and Bow, they get response where they think it's going to be a close fight and they may see an interesting outcome. Colin, thanks very much. Now, this programme started yesterday, you may have known that, and it's now whatever it is, four o'clock in the morning, which means that the morning papers are already out and available, and at the party, they've both got them down there. Mark, I don't know, is it Mark's got them? Yeah, Jonathan, we're in the um, London Eye, and we do have the first editions of the papers, but sad to say they're already out of date, Completely. most of them. I've got Andrew Neil with me and Andrew Porter from the Sunday Times. Uh, Andrew Neil, what, what um, are you noticing in the papers? I'm sorry to say, as... I mean, I'm a broadcaster, but I'm also a newspaper man. On a night like this, the newspapers are almost wholly useless because they've already had to go to press and they don't know the result. We all knew Labour was going to win. The question was the size of the majority. If you take the sun, it's a, it's a dad cert, it says, but the mail says uh, angry voters give Blair a shock, but we don't know how big the shock was. No, but you get a, an idea of the, the take that the papers but, but are... As you know, tonight's story is not the fact that Labour's won. Tonight's story is what is the size of the Labour majority. And even as we broadcast, I mean, we came on air tonight saying the Labour majority would be 66. When we spoke earlier on this programme, it was going to be, what, 82, it's 83? Now 76, it's now down to 76. Yeah. That's the story, because there are two people who have to win tonight. One is the Labour Party, the other is Mr Blair. Now, the Labour Party will win. What we don't yet know, because it depends on the size of the majority, is has Mr Blair won? Andrew Porter, you've got the Guardian and the Telegraph diametrically opposed Absolute, politically. Absolutely. What have they got? I think the Guardian is saying Labour edges towards victory, and the, and the Daily Telegraph is saying Blair's majority is slashed. I think. I think the interesting thing is yesterday's papers on on the day of the poll were all predicting a very easy sort of walk in the park for Mr Blair and the Labour Party. I think what we've seen tonight is actually it hasn't been that. And inside the Guardian and the Telegraph, they're both saying that. The war has been a key factor in this, and this is why this majority, instead of being towards 100 and over 100, is going to be between sort of you know 60 and 80. And I think that is the story. The papers yesterday were predicting an easy, an easy ride for him. I think these papers are particularly, you know, the very pro-Labour Guardian saying you know edges towards victory. That is not a positive headline. It isn't. And yet, if you'd won by any party that wins this country by 70 seats, that's not edging towards victory. That's a hell of a result. 70 seats is huge. It's more than Mrs Thatcher but clearly not That's compared true. to what they did have. That's no. absolutely true. In the con but, but in the context of this battle, which has been on the on based on, which it shows you the, the confines of this battle, that it's all been built around 
anything below 70 is a good result for Michael Howard, incredible as it seems historically. You know? but what about the, in broad terms, the way the papers have covered the campaign? I mean, the Daily Mail um, backed the Tories viciously against Tony Blair as well, weren't they? Which they did not do in 1997. They were very lukewarm towards John Major. They didn't do it in 2001 because they didn't think the Tories were going to win, rightly. This time they have thrown their weight. They've run a very, I mean, you can have your view whether it's right or wrong, but in terms of a newspaper, they ran it. If the Tories had run a campaign as good as the Daily Mail campaign, the Tories might have done a bit better. All right, well, that's the morning papers. Straight back to Jonathan. Thank you very much. Two pieces of news. One is that the Westmoreland seat of Tim Collins, there is a recount there. So, it, as I suggested earlier, it obviously is very close. And while we were at the pod, they were on the pod at the Millennium Wheel, the Lib Dems gained Solihull. We have got Folkestone in the background. We will be at the Folkestone count where Michael Howard will see how he has done, how the voters of Folkestone Hyde have regarded him. But meanwhile, with us is Helen Little who was a Scottish MP and is now going to become the High Commissioner for Australia, assuming that this victory is, 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 is achieved. What, what, what's your take on it? You're now liberated. Well, you're a diplomat, so you're not really liberated. <laughs> but you don't, have to, you, don't, you don't have to speak the party line. Well, uh, yeah, I think it is actually amazing that we have a situation where we are looking at a third Labour term when you consider that not so very long ago we were being written off as never again being capable of being elected. And I've been around a very, very long time and I, I went through all the days in the 80s uh, when time after time I came into studios like this to explain away Labour defeats. And now looking at the prospect of a third Labour term is really quite amazing. And even, you know, a, a figure of upwards of 70 is still quite a remarkable result 72 we're on for the moment. Any, uh, any party in any circumstances. Why are they all saying, your former colleagues, why are they all saying, yes, we've got to listen? I, I said to Ruth Kelly, you've got to listen. Yes, we have got to start to listen. <laughs> now, start to listen? Well, I, I think we have been listening, but I, I think... You we, just there, here. There is a message from every election, and, and this election, I think, the message has got to be that we have to engage much more uh, intimately and much more directly with the population. British politics is changing. When you have a situation where people, I think, thought they could vote for the Liberal Democrats and it was a sort of no-pain situation... It's now a serious thing. Yet it's now serious and you have the Conservatives more or less, frankly, flatlining. Uh, despite all the uh, speculation It could the be that, as we've been suggesting, that what we're into is a new era of genuine three-party politics. It could be. We could be going into a new uh, political dimension altogether that, that in the United Kingdom we've not had to deal with before. Obviously, as a Scot, I'm quite used to dealing with that kind of, of complexity. And it does mean that the electorate becomes much more sophisticated. More of this in a while. But now, though, it's time for us to link up with ITV newsrooms around the United Kingdom for more on what's been happening where you are tonight. So just join us again in a couple of minutes. I'm Jonathan Wills with the headlines from the election results here in London. Possibly the biggest Tory win in the capital so far. Putney in south-west London. Justine Greening has overturned a Labour majority of more than 2,704 years ago. Her margin of victory tonight over sitting MP Tony Coleman, just over 1,760 votes, a swing to the Tories of more than 6%. I think we worked very hard for a long time to uh, talk to residents about the issues that matter to them and also to work hard on those issues. We had a very positive campaign here. Another major win for the Conservatives. Greg Hands has taken Hammersmith and Fulham from Labour. His majority was just over 5,000, overturning Labour's 2,000-plus margin of victory in 2001, earned by Ian Coleman, who retired at this election. Another Conservative gain now, this time in south-west London. Wimbledon, Stephen Hammond has won the seat for the Tories with a majority of 2,301, overturning Labour's majority of more than 3,700 in 2001. The swing to the Conservatives, just over 7% there. Now, the former Conservative Foreign Secretary, Sir Malcolm Rifkind, is back in Parliament as the MP for Kensington and Chelsea. Sir Malcolm became the Tory candidate after another former Cabinet member, Michael Portillo, decided to retire. It's one of the safest Conservative seats. He got 18,144 votes, a majority of more than 12,000. I believe that what has happened with the 
very large increase in the Conservative majority in Kensington and Chelsea, with the seats that we've already won in Peterborough and Newbury and Putney and elsewhere, shows that the Conservative Party has ended the gloom years of the last decade. Another Labour loss was Hornsey and Wood Green. Lynn Featherston, a member of the London Assembly, is now a member of Parliament for the Liberal Democrats. Her majority, almost 2,400. Right, that's it from us. We're back with GMTV. Good. Welcome back to those of you who've been picking up what's been happening in your area. In every single area this evening has been exciting. There can't be one dull area in the whole of the country because of the way the votes have been going. We are now predicting a Labour majority slightly lower than where we were about 10 minutes ago. A Labour majority now we are predicting of 70. Now look down here on your tally. Labour 317 votes, Conservatives 143, the Liberal Democrats on 48, although we're still predicting they in the end will have 59 votes and the rest on 12. That means we are only seven, seven seats away now from declaring that the Prime Minister will have achieved that record third term. We know it's going to happen, but nonetheless, in politics, the moment at which it happens is a very signal thing in a democracy that you believe in. So, meanwhile, slightly less pompously, let's go to the summary. And here we have it, 520 seats in, 317 very close to the 324 winning post, 143 so far the Conservatives, the 48 for the Liberal Democrats. 520 seats so far in. The gains and losses, the Labour Party so far has lost 33 seats, the Conservatives have gained 21, the Liberal Democrats have so far gained 9, and the rest have gained 3. Two of those being independents, one of those being independents. Barbara Roche, I should have pointed out before, is out of her Midland seat, and Stephen Twigg is out of Enfield Southgate. Both of them Labour Party politicians, one a minister, and Barbara Roche a former minister. And Labour have lost Braintree, Hebel Hempstead, and the Rekin. Three Labour seats down. And here is a gain in Hammersmith and Fulham for the Conservatives with a majority of 5,000. The swing from Labour to Conservatives, 7.4%. One of these southern seats which is having these slightly bigger gains. And Harwich, the Conservative, have gained with a majority of 920. The swing from Labour to Conservative, smaller, 3.6%. And here is Guildford. The Conservatives have gained Guildford, which has been to and fro over the years, with a tiny majority of 347. The swing from Liberal Democrat to Conservative there, 0.9%. And Western Supermayor. The Conservatives have gained Western Supermayor from the Liberal Democrats, a majority of 2,079. Conservatives, 19,804, swing 2.5%. Let us now go to Folkestone, where we are about to hear that Michael Howard, the leader of the Conservative Party, is almost, maybe, could conceivably be knocked out, but very unlikely, given what has happened to the others who are uh, subject to the decapitation strategy. Well, it has to be said that Tim Collins, um, who's uh, apparently there is a recount there, we know there's a recount there, um, um, was very close. But Michael Howard is not looking to me like someone who thinks that he's lost... Um, his seat in Folkestone and Hyde, is he, Nick? No, I think he's been comfortable all along, frankly, with the fact that he would win this seat. I wonder how comfortable he is tonight with the number of gains he's got. Because although we're hearing Tory gains in your summary there, it's a pretty small number. We see this dramatic fall in Labour's majority, no dramatic increase in the number of Tory seats, and I think when they sit down in the House of Commons, they'll realise just how big that Labour Party is they're facing. He's been here since 1983 in this seat. That's right, he came into Parliament at the same time as Tony Blair. He's had rather less fortunate circumstances, although he did have a, a long period in government, of course, as a minister, and will have enjoyed that. But what's in his mind now about whether to stay or whether to go? He may hint at that now, but it may be a little early. There are Conservatives already ringing journalists and have been for three or four days telling us that we will speak out on Friday. He's within four seats now of knowing that he's not going to be the Prime Minister as he would want it. And other news in is the Liberal Democrats have regained Brent East, that by-election seat that they won with a massive um, swing towards another 28% in 2003. So it's good news for the Liberal Democrats. We'll now hear whether Michael Howard is in with a William majority Arthur that he would like or not. Being the returning officer at the parliamentary election for the Folkestone and Hyde constituency, held on 5th of May 2005, do hereby give notice that the number of votes recorded for each candidate at the said election is as follows. Carol Peter Damien, Liberal Democrat, 
14,481. Hazel Francis, the Green Party, 688. Yeah! Up and roll! Dan Sylvia, Peace and Progress, 22. Yeah! Holdsworth, Petrina Alexandra, UK Independence Party, 619. Yeah. <laughs> Howard Michael, the Conservative Party candidate, 26,161. A very good result for Michael Howard. He'll be no wonder he's looking so happy. personal reward at least for the tough, hard campaign he fought. Hil Hilton Parts Rodney, the Get Britain Back Party, 153. <laughs> Jug Lord Toby, the official monster raving loony party, 175. <laughs> Smith Graham, Senior Citizens Party, 151. Yay! <laughs> Thomason Maureen, the Labour Party candidate, 6,053. And I do. So here is the result, a majority of 11,669 to Michael Howard. Liberal Democrats in second place, 26,000 versus 14,480. The swing from Liberal Democrats to Conservative, 5.6%. But look down there on that tally, Labour, 320. It does nothing to get Michael Howard anything like as close as he would have wished to be to Downing Street. Mr High Sheriff, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you, Mr High Sheriff, the acting returning officer, and all those who have worked so hard and put in the long hours that have been necessary to make the arrangements for this election work as smoothly as they have. I also want to thank the police who have, as usual, played their vital part in these arrangements. Uh, it's a great burden on them and I want to express my appreciation for everything they too have done. I want to thank uh, my agent, Bob Davidson, yeah, buddy. Love you, mate. Hey. and the most wonderful and dedicated band of helpers and workers who have worked so hard, so relentlessly, and so enthusiastically to give us this fantastic result. The fact that uh, my majority has almost doubled yeah. makes me feel very yeah. humble. I'd like, to, I'd like to commiserate with my, uh, my various opponents. And uh, I'd like, above all, to thank the people of this constituency, this wonderful constituency, which I have had the honour and the privilege to represent for over 20 years now. I have always said that representing this constituency is the greatest privilege I have had in the whole of my political career. Uh, I have always tried to do my best for all my constituents. I will certainly continue to do that, continue to work hard, continue to do all in my power to advance the interests and the welfare of everyone who lives in this constituency, and I'm enormously grateful for the vote of confidence which they have placed in me today.
I'd like also to congratulate Robert Bliss and Susan Carey, the two successful county council candidates, <laughs> whose, whose results have, have so far been announced. It, uh, it looks from the way in which the national results are going that uh, Mr Blair is going to win a third term for Labour. And I congratulate him uh, on that victory. I believe that the time has now come for him to deliver on the things that really matter to the people of our country. And if he does in his third term, then he will have my full support. If he does deliver on the need for cleaner hospitals, for school discipline, for more police, for value for money, and for controlled immigration, he will indeed have my support. But the time has now come for action and not talk from him. Yeah. For our party, for the Conservative Party, I think that what has happened on this election day marks a significant step towards our recovery. I am proud of the campaign that we have fought. We have taken a stand on the things that really do matter to the people of our country. We have sent a message to Mr Blair. And in the next Parliament, uh, we will be able to form a stronger opposition. I'm proud of the fact that we will have the first black Conservative Member of Parliament in the next Parliament. How about that? That we will... Yeah. That, 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 that we will have a British Asian on the Conservative benches in the next Parliament, and that we will have many excellent new women members of Parliament in that Parliament. So for the Conservative Party, this election marks a real advance towards our recovery. The task which faces us in the next Parliament is to complete that recovery, and it's a task which I'm sure everyone in the Conservative Party will address with real relish. Thank you all very much indeed. Michael Howard there effectively conceding defeat, congratulating Mr Blair, Tony Blair, on his victory, but saying that for the government the time has come to deliver. If he does deliver, then he will have my support. But he also said in relation to his own party, the Conservative Party, it's been a, six, a significant step forwards towards our recovery this election. I'm proud of the campaign that we fought, he said, obviously referring to some of those who didn't like the campaign, and he said we sent a message to Mr Blair, and in the next Parliament we will form a stronger opposition, a stronger opposition. We're now on 321 votes, only three, 321 seats, only three away from victory. Um, doubling his vote there, Michael, ha um, Michael Howard. Michael Portillo, he doubling his vote there, is a signal achievement, whether or not you agree with parts of his campaign. Yeah, it, it's uh, certainly not, not the sort of thing I was very good at. Uh, no, he's done very well. He's got a very good uh, personal vote in his own seat. Um, There's the a big sad thing, coming. Well, the, yeah, the sad thing is, if, if in 1997 any Tory had been told... 322 to Labour now, sorry to interrupt you. If in 1997 any Tory had been told that eight years later we'd have 195 seats, we would not have been very pleased with that. Gerald, you've got our man there. Yeah, a portrait of the Michael Howard, and I very much agree with Michael. I w thought it was awful when he whipped up the fears on immigration and so forth, so I've got him going back to uh, the sewer, and the rats here are running away. Your, you're, your you're satire is getting cruel, more and more biting as we go through the <laughs> evening, isn't it? Liberated, Ho Nick. Hopefully. Uh, stay, stay, on that, stay on that picture while, while Nick talks. I think that this result does mean that although there's unlikely to be calls for an immediate leadership contest, there will be an immediate <coughs> and quite bitter debate in the Conservative Party about what they did that's, wrong. That's he has not passed Michael Foote's number of seats, 209. We are not projecting that's that he will pass... That's in 1983, in that 1983... 
That's right. Catastrophe for Labour. Absolute catastrophe. Uh, the electoral system, it has to be said, is rather crueler to the Conservative Party than it was to Michael Foote's uh, Labour Party. He, Michael Foote, only had 27% of the vote and got 209 seats. We're projecting the Tories could have as high as 34% of the votes and get l below that. Nevertheless, uh, you have to live with the electoral system you've got, and I have no doubt at all now that senior Conservatives will come out and say, enough is enough. We have not had this debate in our party for three terms, and we're going to damn well have it now. And I think you'll have that, but many of those people will not want Howard to go. They'll want him to sit there while the debate is had. 323. We are now one, one. There it is. 324 to Labour. So ITV at this moment declares formally that the Labour Party, Tony Blair, has won this election. A record achievement for Labour, a record achievement for Tony Blair. Labour is forming the next government of the United Kingdom. Head on a little, it's only we're going to go to Bethnal Green where there's a very tight fight there and see the result there. We shall soon be there, but w as we go there, Helen, I ask the candidates what do you make of this? This Popper is Bethnal Green and Bow, where we're pretty Stone, certain please. that mm. Una King's going down to George Galloway. Not a good night for you there. It's a very sad night, very <coughs> distressing night. And uh, one that you explain how? It's hard <coughs> without detailed local knowledge, but it looks as if it's been a particularly vicious and nasty campaign, and Una King is an exceptionally talented black woman. This is actually, at the moment, we thought it was Bethnal Green, but as happens in these things, the <laughs> same place is used for different results, and this is Poplar and Canning Town that is, we're about to hear now. So I think we, 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 we'll probably take it if we need to, but, but meanwhile, let's go back to the, to, the, to, the, to the victory. It's only fair, Helen Little, to let you have a, a chance to have your say on, on this achievement. Well, it, it makes Tony Blair probably, the, well, definitely the most successful Labour Prime Minister ever and one of the most successful United Kingdom Prime Ministers. I think this has only ever been done twice before with Mrs Thatcher and, and Palmerston. Here's, here's, here's the man from Scotland as well who's likely to be the next Labour of the Party, Gordon Brown. I'm told he's at the National Portrait Gallery. It must be in Scotland. I don't know why no, he's think, gone uh, He's not at the National Portrait Gallery in London. At least I doubt it. I think he it. is. I think he at is. London. He's, yes, uh -huh. he should yeah, be that's in the now. location as well, isn't it? Of yes. the he party's is. official party. Yeah. Uh, Labour back, were trying to keep he's back quiet in London. That they were they, having they, they a, were a celebration and a party. Well, in case, it couldn't, in case they couldn't have a celebration. So that is the celebration. So he is in London. He's at the National Portrait Gallery in London. I don't know whether his portrait's in there, but I guess it will be one day if it, if it, if it isn't yet. <laughs> um, but to come to the, the politics of this, Helen, um, it, how long is it before, we've had this conversation uh, before, how long is it before Tony Blair um, hears, heeds the, the, the siren voices and says, yes, I, I've got to step down now. Gordon deserves his term. Without him, I would never have had this kind of result. He could have dished me and he didn't. Well, I think you've got to bear in mind that it looks as if it's going to be a really quite significant result for Tony Blair and he has said that he will not fight uh, another general election and we can speculate indefinitely as to when the time will, will come that he will instigate a, a leadership election and there is no doubt that Gordon Brown and Tony Blair are probably the most effective team we have seen in recent British political history and that, that team worked very, very effectively in this campaign as they have over two periods of a, of a Labour government. OK, I'm going to take a, a pause there. In a moment we'll be at Bethnal Green and Bow for that result as it comes through and any of the other quick ones and with this thought that are predicting a Labour majority of 70, we're going to take a very short break and don't go to bed. You won't miss anything if you stay with us, you will if you go to bed. See you in a moment. You first means a bank that's with you every step of the way. Like giving you a great range of mortgages. So wherever you're moving to, we'll help find a mortgage that's as right for you as your new home. The perfect mortgage for you, just one of the ways we're working to put you first. People in love. Good friends. New mums. 
families. Whoever you are, when you join TalkTalk, Talk, every call you make to each other on your landline is free. Forever. Talk Talk. Let's do it together. through layers of volcanic rock to fill you with volcanicity. <laughs> Only Actimil contains the good bacteria LC Immunitas. Try it and see if you feel the difference. Mm, there none. Some of these plants were potted in Westland multipurpose compost with added John Innes, and the rest in leading competitors. Daydream. I fell asleep amid the flowers. Four weeks later, the results speak for themselves. Westland, making British gardens healthier. <sighs> Wrinkles. However much you try to get rid of them, they just keep coming back. Well, now you can fight them more effectively with improved Nivea Visage Anti-Wrinkle Q10+. Plus. Its new energy complex visibly reduces existing wrinkles and helps to actively defend against the appearance of new ones. Wrinkles hate it. It's our best anti-wrinkle Q10 Plus ever. Proven. Only from Nivea Visage. Face care inspired by the way your skin works. More and more people are talking to each other for free with TalkTalk, Talk, the landline company from the Carphone Warehouse. Welcome back. I said you wouldn't miss anything. We're going straight over now to Bethnal Green and Bow for this very tight seat. This is Una King, who sounds as though she's going down to George the Galloway. Of the parliamentary election for the Bethnal Green and Bow constituency. I, Christine Gilbert, being the acting returning officer at the election of the Member of Parliament for the Bethnal Green and Bow constituency, held on Thursday, the 5th of May, 2005, do hereby give notice that the number of votes recorded for each candidate is as follows. Syed Nurul Islam Dulu, Liberal Democrats, 4,928. Ajiro et Evia, Alliance for Change, Restore People's Freedom, 68. <laughs> Shahagir Bakht Farooq, the Conservative Party candidate, 6,244. <laughs> John Patrick William Foster, the Green Party candidate, 1,950. George Galloway, respect, 15,801. <laughs> Una Tamsin King, the Labour Party candidate, 14,978. Has taken Bethnal Green and Bow from the Labour Party. Una King is out of... Parliament out of Westminster. Celia this Pugh, is a, a result which will Celia very Pugh, much uh, shock and dismay Labour loyalists, but those who are deeply opposed to the war in Iraq will say they're very glad of it. The majority, the very slight, 823. Respect Party, George Galloway, 15,801. Una King for Labour, 
14,978. There is a huge swing there from Labour to respect, but respect didn't exist until this election of 26.2%. Let us listen this now to George is Galloway. For Iraq. This defeat that you have suffered and all the other defeats that new Labour has suffered this evening is for Iraq. All the people you killed, all the lies you told have come back to haunt you. And the best thing the Labour Party could do is sack you tomorrow morning as soon as they get back to work. New Labour plumbed new depths in this campaign. And now the police and the courts will try to fathom exactly what they have been up to. But it was no aberration. The reason this count has taken so long, the reason the turnout is so low, the reason that there are hundreds, if not thousands, of ghost figures on the electoral roll, the reason that the postal ballots were only 68% of those who applied for them is because the London borough of Tower Hamlets is in the grip of a corrupt political culture. And when we begin, when we begin our campaign on Monday, <coughs> To take control of this borough council, it will be as a new broom to sweep that political culture of corruption away. Una King boasted she was going to finish me off. But let me be kinder to her than she was to me. I have not finished her off. Una King is an able person who will be back in politics and in Parliament. And the defeat was not her defeat this evening. It was a defeat for Tony Blair and New Labour and all of the betrayals. And I would like to thank on behalf of everyone Una King for the eight years she spent as the Member of Parliament in this constituency and wish her well in what I'm sure will be a resumed and long parliamentary career. Madam Returning Officer, I must thank the workers here tonight and on the polling stations today, but I cannot thank you or the management of the Borough of Tower Hamlets. You have presided over a shambles of an election, a shambles of an electoral role you have presided over postal vote applications and ghost voters which would disgrace a banana republic. And it's about time you tendered your resignation. Thank you very much to all those who voted for me. In East London, a new political power is born. Ali Rahman, 20% next door. East Ham and West Ham, respect have come second with 20 and 24 percent respectively. There is a revolt spreading throughout East London against the betrayals of new Labour, and you ain't seen nothing yet. So, George Galloway, aside from a gracious reference to Una King and the likelihood of her returning, making a very bitter speech after a bitter campaign, bitter and hostile to Tony Blair and some extraordinarily powerful allegations against the administration of Tower Hamlets. Um, you don't often, under these circumstances, hear anything like that, but here's Una King now. ...constituency staff, organiser, and my excellent and such a loyal campaign team. Just, they've been absolutely fantastic. Thank you. 
I'd also like to thank my husband, friends, family and my extended family here in the East End, not just for the last eight weeks, but for the last eight years. I joined the Labour Party over 20 years ago because I wanted to see a fairer society. I wanted to see the poorest people in Britain getting a fairer share. And I wanted to see a society where everyone, whatever their background, race or colour, had the opportunity to achieve their full potential. That's why I got into politics and that's why I was so happy to have represented this constituency for eight years. It has been the best job in the world and I have been so proud of what Labour has achieved. Labour members of Parliament working with a Labour Council, working with a Labour government to make real improvements in the lives of people here. It's clear that Britain is set for another four years of a Labour government and I'm very happy for the country as a whole because I know that only Labour is committed to delivering on health, education, jobs, housing, police on the beach. So Una King there, the outgoing Member of Parliament for Bethnal Green and Bow saying her farewells. Um, there is incidentally, uh, not incidentally, rather intriguingly, there's a recount in Crawley. There have been a mass of recounts going on. Um, Labour held uh, Crawley with a 17% majority. It was a very distant Conservative target, but there is there a recount. But now for the news of the night, back to Mary Nightingale. Mary. Thanks, Jonathan. In the last few minutes, the Conservative leader, Michael Howard, has congratulated Tony Blair on his third election victory. Looking relaxed, Mr Howard said the Tories would now be able to form a stronger opposition. And he warned Mr Blair it was time to deliver. If he does deliver on the need for cleaner hospitals, for school discipline, for more police, for value for money and for controlled immigration, he will indeed have my support. But the time has now come for action and not talk from him. Tony Blair has said Labour can be very, very proud of winning an historic third term. Mr Blair, who celebrates his birthday today, had looked sombre when he attended his count at Sedgefield earlier. But speaking at the local Labour club, the Prime Minister sounded much more upbeat. And I know that there are lots of lessons to learn. But I do feel very proud of the fact that we've managed that historic third term victory. And I feel proud too, not just of the changes we have made, but of what we can now do with this mandate. Because one thing is for sure, the Conservative Party, people did not want back. There have, though, been significant Labour defeats. Stephen Twigg lost the Enfield Southgate seat he gained from Michael Portillo in 1997. And as we saw in the last few seconds, Una King has lost a bitterly fought battle to George Galloway of the anti-war respect party in Bethnal Green and Bow. In the last hour, the Liberal Democrat leader, Charles Kennedy, has said he's proud of his party's performance. Sonny held just the latest of some dramatic gains. Mr Kennedy was speaking at the Count in his Inverness constituency, where he was joined by his wife and baby. He said the party would embrace the challenges ahead. The era of three-party politics right across the United Kingdom is now with us. That is something that I welcome. I think it is a healthy development and I think that what we are seeing taking place in terms of the progress of the Liberal Democrats right across the land, in Scotland, in Wales and right throughout England, is something to celebrate. The Scottish Nationalists say they're delighted with their results tonight. Alex Salmond's party have won two seats from Labour, Western Isles and Dundee East. But there's been disappointment for Plaid Cymru, who've gone down a seat. And that's about all the news for now. Back to you, Jonathan. Mary, thank you very much. Liam Fox, who is the co-chairman of the Conservative Party, joins us now from Woodspring in his constituency. Uh, Dr Fox, thank you so much for staying there for us. Most kind of you. Um, but... Uh, it's not a great night for you. We were saying, suggesting in the discussion here, we're projecting, what, 196 seats for you now, less than 200. Big question marks over where do you go from here, what do you do next? Well, I think it is, um, it is a move forward, as Michael Howard said. We'll have new blood in the House of Commons. It will be a stronger opposition. It's very widely drawn. 
Uh, we've got MPs back in, in Wales, I'm delighted to see. We've been taking seats from the Liberals in the, in the south of England. We've been getting back to some of our traditional stronger territories. Uh, that's something we need to build on. We need but, to but, but let me just put it a, this way to you. Uh, the, number of seats you've got, the number of seats you've got rivals that. It's exactly the same as Michael Foote got in a catastrophe election for the Labour Party in 1983. Aren't you going to have to start being, can I put it like this, serious about changing yourselves into a party that can actually win elections rather than have successive defeats? Well, the comparison with uh, Michael Foote, as you know, is an unfair one because he got 27% of the vote at that election. Um, and we've just elected a government in this country now with the lowest share of the popular vote since we became a democracy. Uh, so there are a lot of issues will be raised there. But of course, we'll have to sit down and look at the election and see what we could have done better. Uh, I think it's always difficult if you're fighting an election against a relatively benign economic backdrop, uh, which clearly is what we faced at this election. It was always a mountain to climb, and Michael Howard made that very clear. And I think the, the focus and discipline he's given to the campaign has been exemplary. We will Do now take our time to see how we rebuild from here. As I see, we've got a lot of new blood coming into the House of Commons. It will make us a stronger opposition. And, of course, a lot of the Labour MPs who are now forming the majority of the new government are in themselves uh, very, very small majorities and will be the targets for us uh, from here on in. Uh, 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 Lim Fox, um, obviously, Michael Howard, you want him to stay on for a while. Do, do you have a, a perfectly respectable aspiration yourself to run for the leadership if he decides to stand down? No, I want Michael Howard to continue as leader because I think that the discipline and focus he's given us is something that we've needed for many years and I think that, the, that uh, continuity and stability is something that will be very uh, important to those new members of Parliament coming into the House of Commons, getting guidance from an experienced hand there. I think that's exactly what we want to keep. Um, I can just tell you, just to cheer you up a little bit, because you're not looking very cheerful, that the Conservatives have gained Gravesham. Thank you very much for joining us, um, Liam Thanks, Fox. Sir. And now down to Alistair, across to Alistair, who has got a battleground for us, I think. Alistair. Yes, we have, Jonathan. It seems an awfully long time ago, doesn't it? But we did say that these marginal seats comprising the battleground were always going to be a whole series of individual stories, closely fought, didn't know whether it was going to be a straightforward fight, whether it was going to take a long time to determine it, and goodness knows what happened down in Bethnal Green, whoever was going to predict that. Let me take this and put it up onto the battleground and just give you some of the stories of the night. And let's start right down here in column one. Shipley, it's still grey. It's Chris Leslie, the junior constitutional affairs minister. They're now into their third recount, but the word has it that the Conservative Party have taken Shipley. But look, there's Ockhill down there that the Scott Nats had hopes of getting, the Liberal Democrats had hopes of getting, but no, Labour hung on to that. Then if we move along a little bit here into column three, and there it is right at the very top of it, Calder Valley again, that was two recounts, but eventually they held on to it. And just beneath it, look, Redditch there. Jackie Smith, the troubled industry minister who had to wrestle with all of those MG Rover issues. Maybe the people of Birmingham and Redditch thought she did as good a job as she could. The Labour Party held on to Redditch. And then if we come along here, just beg your pardon, my fault, back down one, the Rekin. It's a constituency very few of you will have heard of at all, I'm sure, but it's up there in the northwest. Hunting was the big issue. The Conservatives put a lot of effort into the Rekin and Peter Bradley was out there. Labour lost the Rekin. Then, carrying on along here, and we're into column four now, um, and... All down there, pretty solid red stuff. Hemel Hempstead just snuck in again. That was a series of recounts there. Uh, and also Medway, that was a problematic seat as well. But look up at the top here. There's another Liberal Democrat gain. Bristol West, a strong tradition of Labour support there, but the Liberal Democrats focused on student fees, student finance. And there's a big university there, big former polytechnic. 6% swing gave Bristol West to the Liberal Democrats from uh, the uh, Labour Party. Then right over here, talking of 6%, let me bring you up to here. And uh, we're looking at a whole range of seats there. Leeds Northwest, that was a new candidate who took uh, the flack from the Liberal Democrat Party. And Battersea, down there at the very bottom, after their early success in Putney, the Tory party really thought they'd be able to pull it off in Battersea. No, again recounts, it just didn't work for them. So... It was always going to be a very complicated battle, but it was always going to be a battle about one place and one place alone. Who 
was going to be in Downing Street. We told you at the very beginning of the night that it had to be a swing of more than 10.2%. Who's done it before? Well, great names from history. Winston Churchill, 1951, post-war years, a swing of just 1.1%. But he won. After Winston Churchill, a little bit later on, Ted Heath. He had battles, arguments about shares of popular vote and so on and so forth. Two elections in one year, a swing of 4.7%, however, got him in in the first place in 1970. He was gone after four years. Then, a little bit later on, history was again made, a bigger swing herself was in. You heard from her down on our boat a little bit earlier on. Swing of 5.2% in 1979. But Michael Howard didn't manage to do it, so it's Blair again in Downing Street for another four years. Alistair, uh, so thank you. With a majority we're projecting of 60, 68 from our exit poll, which is 66. In Westland now, Westland and Lonsdale, Westland we are waiting Lonsdale to hear whether or not Tim Collins will get back into the seat. There was a recount there. Here it comes. Do hereby give notice that the number of votes recorded for each candidate at the said election is as follows. Collins. Timothy William George, the Conservative Party candidate, 22,302. Farron, Timothy James, Liberal Democrats, 22,569. Gibson, Robert, UK Independence Party, 660. Kemp, Anthony David, Independent, 309. <coughs> Reardon, John Bernard, the Labour Party candidate, 3,796. The number of ballot papers rejected was 165. So there is the shock result from the perspective the of the Conservative Timothy Party. The biggest head to roll in the Tories. The the a majority of 267 to the Liberal Democrats. 22,569 votes. Tim Collins, the outgoing Shadow Education Secretary Tim Collins, 22,302. A swing from Conservative to Liberal Democrats of 3.6% there. Just enough to get rid of Tim Collins. The share of the vote, 45.5, the Liberal Democrats, 44.9, uh, the Conservatives. So well, there we been. have it. Um, I have to say that when we were talking to Tim Collins earlier, he was sounding extremely bubbly and buoyant, saying, yes, he was certain to get back in there. He had virtually no doubt that he would do it. Well, that was pride before a fall, wasn't it, Nick? Yes, not only that, he's now £2,500 worse off because at the last election, the Lib Dem said they'd get him. And uh, on a radio programme I did, he challenged uh, Tim Rasley, who ran the Lib Dem campaign to a £250 bet. He won. And at this election, he said, come on, let's times it times 10. 2,500. So he's not only lost his seat, he's lost two and a half thousand pounds, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. And uh, you're right, what's fascinating is that the decapitation strategy names that we were given by the Lib Dems, Michael Howard, of course, Theresa May, Oliver Letwin, David Davis, have not only all held their seats, but pretty comfortably, actually, and most yeah. of them have increased their majority. The one name they didn't give and the one person who thought he was comfortable is gone. He's the education spokesman for the Tories. But, but that's exactly he was Michael Howard's yeah. um, uh, advisor, political advisor, when he was Home Secretary. He used to be a press spokesman for the Tories as well. And, and as it was David earlier who said, you, if you're going to decapitate, don't go around shouting well, about it. Well, that's right. I think <laughs> the, the decapitation strat strategy, so-called, was never a strategy at all. I mean, uh, it, it was a, a piece of publicity, I think, which backfired. But I, I, think, um, I think you were being very polite about Tim Collins. He's always conducted himself as though he was really rather arrogant. And I, and I thought his, uh, his interview earlier in this programme was, was really very sort of, I mean, it, it was boastful. And he's had a, a really serious Come up punch on the nose. Yeah. OK, well, there we are. We'll be back for more in just a moment. As I say, don't go to bed. Don't go off to work if you just got up. Keep watching us. We'll be back in a moment after this break. Heads up there. Hey. 
How you doing? We're from Orange. We come seeking enlightenment. Please tell us how to spread good karma throughout the mobile world. Lion ga ichiban tsuyoi ga saru to onnaji da. What? He he says a network is nothing without its customers. Duh, what else? Sore dake da, sono buta yaro. Wise man says to uh, look after your existing customers before seeking out new ones. In other words, we have to put orange customers first. This guy's good. Let's bring him with us. Why don't you ever come up with stuff like that? Here's an idea. A mortgage you'll want to stick with. A mortgage that won't tie you in. A mortgage that will always track just above the base rate. A mortgage you can relax about. One you'll never want to change again. Move to one of Abbey's Flexible Plus Mortgages. Call 0800 80 80 80 or visit your local branch. Abbey. More ideas for your money. much you try to get rid of them they just keep coming back well now you can fight them more effectively with improved Nivea Visage anti-wrinkle Q10 plus its new energy complex visibly reduces existing wrinkles and helps to actively defend against the appearance of new ones wrinkles hate it it's our best anti-wrinkle Q10 plus ever proven only from Nivea Visage face care inspired by the way your skin works Got my hair, got my head, got my brains, got my ears, got my heart, got my soul, got my mouth, I got my smile, I got my arms, got my hands, got my feet, got my toes, got my liver. Designers at Debenhams photograph by Frederick Auerbach. J by Jasper Conran. Rosher, John Rosher. Manta Ray. Debenhams, styling the nation. How do you like your eggs in the morning? I like mine with a kiss. I'm satisfied as long as I get my kiss. How do you like your toast in the morning? There's nothing quite like breakfast in New York. And New York's favorite juice is Tropicana. Nothing added, nothing taken away. Welcome back with the news that it's nearly five o'clock on the 6th of May, the dawn of another Labour government. The headlines. The Prime Minister has won an historic third term, promising to respond, I quote, wisely after his majority has been halved. For the Tories, David Davis and Oliver Letwin are safely back in. Gains for the Tories there are and for the Liberal Democrats. And still to come, some final impressions from our party on the night's results so far. And we are predicting a Labour majority of 68, which would give Labour in the House 357 seats, the Conservatives 196, and the Liberal Democrats on 61. And Gerald Scarf, still inexhaustible <laughs> with ideas of an increasingly ruthless and terrible kind. <laughs> Gerald. Well, this is uh, Tony Blair's delivering the coup de grace here. He's dri driving the stake through Michael Howard's chest, and I think that's <laughs> the end of it. I don't think... <laughs> 
he, 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 he will he, rise again, I suppose, though, they he, always do. There, there, there's always resurrection <laughs> after an election. Normally you're being very rough on Tony Blair. I can remember some of the ones at the very beginning of the evening where you had Tony Blair in a very difficult position in relationship to the, the rear end of President Bush. That's right, yes. See, so yeah. it's a plague on all the houses, really, isn't it's it? It's a plague on all the houses, yes. I, 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 uh... And you don't sum up the energy to do anything about Charles Kennedy. Do you think he's too nice? I have some Charles Kennedy, but he, uh, there's nothing has really come up that I can cotton on to. I'll okay. try in the next hour. Okay. Um, I know that lots of people want to speak here briefly. You wanted to say something about the share of the vote, well, David. It's quite interesting that the, the, the Conservative Party, if your predictions are right, are going to finish up <coughs> with a smaller parliamentary party than Michael Foote had in the disastrous 1983 election. And that was a one-off. This is the third defeat in a row. So I don't think they can be all that happy talking about you opposition or the rest of it. And the other point I wanted to make is that, the, again, the electoral system appears to have worked against the Liberal Democrats. 20, we've gone up from nine, nearly 19% to nearly 23%. That should give us, by my calculation, something like 149 MPs. We're only going to have about 60. Which is still a pretty good uh, performance. Oh, it's, it's, it's very, no, I'm not, yeah. I'm not belittling it. No, but I, I see the point it, you're making. It is, it is I think, the best um, Liberal uh, success since, since Lloyd George, without question. And Nick, before we do our highlights for the evening, you're I going just briefly wanted to show you something on Elvis, <coughs> our election visualizer, just to give you a picture, because there are enough results in now that you can just visually see very powerfully on this how the country has changed. This is how we started the night, 2001. And remember, the height of those blocks is the size of the majorities. And just look, particularly in the southeast, and then you'll see what's going on. So let's zoom in on the southeast, tilt it up a bit to see those things. Now, that's the beginning of the night. Look at the Tory gains that you see in the southeast. Some of them just increasing the majority in seats they already hold. There we are. A huge swathe of blue. But then if you come out again and look at the country as a whole, it is only really in that southeast corner that you see it. For example, Jonathan, if you go back to 2001 there and take another critical area, the Pennines there, up there. There we are, 2001, start of the night. How different is it now? Not very. Huge numbers of seats there in that Pennine area. Yorkshire, Lancashire seats that Margaret Thatcher held and the Tories have done nothing at all. And just finally, go into the West Midlands and you see exactly the same thing. 2001, 2005, very little in the way of Tory gains. So they are making the big difference in the south and southeast, but in much of the rest of the country, not much at all. Not nearly enough. Um, now, Paul Davis now has for us the story of the night so far. Over to him. Walking into the history books. Tony Blair acknowledges his supporters as he arrives at his own count at Sedgefield. Already he knows he and Cherie will be returning to Downing Street and he will be leading the Labour government into an unprecedented third term, albeit with a substantially reduced majority. Anthony Charles Linton Blair, 24,428. His personal majority was increased, but he acknowledged the fact that nationwide many Labour supporters had made a protest against his government's actions.